pH of household ammonia is 11.5. We see a couple of things. We have a weak base system and we know the pH, which means if we need it, we know the pOH and we got the H hydroxide concentration and we know the H plus concentration if we need it. What is the molarity? My first thought for molarity is to go to moles, molarity equal moles divided by liters of solution, but I don't know anything about the volume. But guess what I do know? Molarity is a concentration, and oftentimes in an acid-base uh, situation, I can use a rice type of equation to find out the concentration. So the analysis here is to realize we have a weak base system, and we can get to basic information, basic concentrations this way. Let's look at how this looks cleaned up. So what you essentially have is a weak base system, and KB was given. Since you have a weak base system, what do we know? KB is given. This is what it's asking us for. And this can be calculated. So I'll put a check plus. So one equation, it was actually originally two unknowns, but one of them could be calculated. So this is essentially a way to disguise a weak base. Normally, we're given Cb and Kb, and we calculate the hydroxide. This time, the pH was given. Remember, that's the same thing as given the hydroxide concentration. Because if you know pH, you know pOH. If you know pOH, you know what? hydroxide concentration. So, uh, pretty simple question. Once you see exactly what you have, just a weak base, a weak base system. Look at another one. Okay, let's look at another one. Calculate the pH of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid solution. First thing we know is we're given pOH. Next thing we know is we have a polyatomic acid, H2SO4. How do we solve this? We get the H plus for step one, and we get the H plus for step two. But this one should be relatively easy because the first step, we don't have an equilibrium constant. We know that after the first step, the conjugate base is going to be exactly the same thing as the H plus, and the H plus is equal to whatever the concentration of your original acid is. Why? Because we know for a strong acid, the H plus is just initial concentration of your acid. So, we know what the H plus for step one is, 0 0.01 molar. What are we going to do for step two? Well, if you look at your reaction here, for step two, we can set it up to where K is equal to the concentration of your products. This is going to break down to give you sulfate plus H4. Your products divided by your reactant is equal to K2. We set up our equation. What's our starting amounts? Well, our starting amounts, we know we have 0.1 of the H plus material, and we know we have 0.1 of the conjugate acid from the previous reaction. So now we change, we go to Y. What happens when this reaches equilibrium? We lose some H2SO4, I'm sorry, some HSO4, and we gain sulfate and H plus. How much? Well, this one you're supposed to do the quadratic. Got to admit, on a test, I would have just gone ahead and, and, and seen how far apart my answers are. But once you do the quadratic equation, you wind up for step two. It winds up being 0 0.01. So now what you do is you come back and you, react, you add the step one material plus the step two, and you wind up with a total concentration of 0.11 molar H+, plus, which translates to a pH of 0 0.96. Does this make sense? You bet it does. This is the strong acid, and you would expect it to be somewhere in the one range.
That's an example of a polyatomic. Calculate the pH of a 0.15 molar HF. So what do we see there? I see a weak acid. And 0.2 molar KF. Hmm. I see an F minus there, which is what? The conjugate base. I've got a weak acid and its conjugate base. That means I have a buffer solution, plug and chug. I know this is the equation for a buffer solution. H plus is equal to CA, KA divided by CB. All of these numbers were given. It's a simple plug and chug on this one. Calculate H plus, then calculate pH from that. pH is 3.27. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a weak acid system. It does. Right, next one. Calculate the pH of a solution that has 0.2 molar ammonia. So I'm seeing a weak base. And ammonium chloride. I don't know about the chloride, but let's see. What do we have here? Oh, I see. Oh, there's its conjugate acid. So what do I have? A weak base conjugate acid system. What do I have here? Another buffer solution. This time I have a base buffer solution. I'm just going to substitute into my formula for a weak base buffer solution. All three values were given. It's a very simple matter to calculate the OH concentration, the pH, and don't select this as the answer choice because the question specifically asks for pH even though you're talking about a base solution, and that's kind of a, a tripwire if you're not keeping up, that you find the POH and you think you've actually done it because you've worked out this equation, when in essence, what you calculated was the POH, and now you know the relationship between POH and pH, and you wind up with a pH of 9.56. Does this make sense? Yes, it does. You have a base solution, and you would expect the pH to be greater than 7. Next problem, calculate the pH of a 0.01 molar solution of ethanol. pKa is equal to 15.9. Oh my goodness. Okay, so if you're looking at powers, that's like 10 to the minus 15.9. That is pretty small, right? What is the, well, the pKa for water is only this, so guess what? This is much, much larger than this. So what's essentially going to control is, is the pH of water. And that's going to be 7. That's kind of the shortcut. You could work all of this out and actually calculate the concentration of the ethanol. And it's going to be so, so small. There it is right there. So when you do that calculation... It's going to be small compared to the H plus for just water. And so it gets lost because it's, what, four orders of magnitude smaller. It gets lost. So the pH is 7. Uh, how many grams of ammonium chloride must be added to 500 mils of 0.1 molar ammonium to produce a buffer solution of pH 9.15? It gives Kb for ammonium. Okay, so the first thing I kind of thought about is if I'm going to grams or something, moles, if I'm going for moles, I'm going to use molarity in liters of solution. It is giving me, it is giving me volumes. Uh, this concentration term, I'm thinking I might have to back into that from the pH. So let's kind of look at this, what we have. We've got ammonia reacting to give ammonium. Yes, so if we got a buffer solution, we know we have some of this and we know some of this, and we know we want this to be our final amount because it's telling us that's what we're going to end up with. So let's look at that. Let's just set up our simple buffer solution and let's calculate the hydroxide concentration because it gives us the concentration of the base. We know what that's going to need to be. Yes, 0.1. We know Kb is given. We know that. And now how are we going to get the hydroxide concentration? 
This is similar to what we did a couple of problems back. If pH is given, you've got to remember, anytime pH is given, you, you know you know pH, but you can also easily get pOH if you need it. You could get hydroxide if you need it, and you could get H+. So in fact, this is very easy to get at because you're essentially given it in the form of a pH. So you can now calculate the initial concentration of what you need, 0.13. Okay, then it becomes a Gen Chem uh, 1411 question of now that you know the concentration, how you're going to get there. And so you're going to go uh, from liters of solution because you want this many liters. From liters, you're going to go to moles. And from moles, you're going to go to grams of ammonium chloride and you're going to calculate 3.48 not that hard when you see how to do it but it's worded really difficultly to unpackage that if you haven't seen it done once before but now you have mm -hmm.